Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hanger. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for June 13th, 2021, 2021. We had a cram jam packed week full of stuff going on. Everything from a brand new Voltron and a high end Voltron, probably the highest end Voltron, and it's coming soon. We got a lot of stuff going on with Transformers, as always, including a new third party masterpiece company, and then we also have updates from a lot of different smaller projects like the 80s Commanders update. We've got updates from Silver Hawks from Super 7. We also have a lackluster Star Wars to talk about, so we're going to get all into this. Coming up! Alright, starting out with a few good things going on at Show Z. We've got the Evolution Toy Super Metal Diakinko. Dia, Diakinko. Anyway, this thing is really cool. Find out on deposit. It's going to be about uh, 10.25 inches tall, so a little bit taller than an Optimus Prime in the Masterpiece scale. And it includes a, a figure for interchangeable hands, two interchangeable face plates, arrow fencer, and a few other things a torpedo, a cutter. But here's the other cool part it also transforms. Wait, wait, wait. Converts. It doesn't transform. It converts into this. That's really cool. I don't know the total price on it, but I figured I'd point it out. For all you Legends collectors out there, New Age. H21T Soundwave transparent version with three cassettes. Yes, three cassettes included with the figure. And this is on sale for $53.09 for the next 28 days. Why would you want a clear one? Well, I started thinking about that myself. And if you got the Magic Square one, you might as well get a clear version of New Age, right? To go along with it. That look pretty cool. And we've also got the Oi Mech. Uh, it's the Optimus Prime oversized uh, H6003-6. Uh, so this, I believe it's, uh, is this Studio Series? It's an oversized Oimek. It looks really cool. It's the Bumblebee movie version of Optimus Prime. Looking pretty good. It's almost 12 inches tall. It is big. It also transforms into this, and it looks, it looks good. I think they did a pretty good job with it, the way it looks and all that. And, of course, it is probably going to be pretty solid, because I think Oimek makes pretty solid figures, and everything I've got Oimek, I'm pretty happy with build-wise, more or less. Last thing it shows Z is transitioning us into Masterpiece news. And it's a new company called Deformation Space DS001 Starscream, up for pre-order for $1.50. And I don't know a whole lot about this company other than the information on Show Z that I found. And it's going to be 9.84 inches tall, so right around the right size next to Megatron. It looks really good and in fact when i first saw it at first glance thought this is a ko of of the new takara already no 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 it's a whole new company doing its own thing here's the back of it and the back of it sort of reminds me a little bit of what make toys did but still a lot cleaner than make toys and so i'm starting to wonder about this thing it's it looks really good and why do we have zeta and this new company coming up right getting into Kara's face that's crazy but interesting at the same time this figure looks very clean very tuned and tune accurate i really like the way it looks i'm starting to be more and more curious about this so i have to pre-order this thing because it looks really good really interesting really promising and at the same time with Takara's coming out the thighs aren't as thin as Takara's, and uh, it doesn't have well, it appears it does have a possibility of a waist swivel in there. So looking really good. Here he is uh, with kind of a kneeling pose. You get to see the knee joints. You get to see some more of the articulation of what it can do. Here's what you kind of sort of have to do to the waist to give it the waist swivel. So separate it just a bit to give it the, the articulation. But at least it has the option for articulation. For me personally, I was never really too bothered by that. But a lot of people are bothered about their seekers not having waist articulation and so there it is right there and here he is looking clean and sleek and slick i do think he presents better when the torso is solid and clipped in versus using that art the articulation but for their first release i really hope this turns out really well so looking at mp52 right next to it, we got new pictures of mp52 and side by side there's a lot of similarities and yet at the same time a lot of differences still looks really good the the new deformation looks good Takara's looks good it's really gonna be hard to decide which one's better 
and it's quite interesting. Like they both look extremely super tuned, have a lot of similarities next to them. Really, really two great options right here. So we're taking more pictures of the Bumblebee Movie Blitzwing Smart Kit by Trumpeteer, and these are some more in-hand image of these, and it does look pretty good. Now, one thing that I seem to have missed the last time was it is pre-painted, so you're getting the pre-painted model, and you will have to build it yourself. But it looks cool. It looks pretty good. I still don't have the exact price on it, but it's going to be an interesting release. And here it is doing a little damage to a bumblebee, so kind of reenacting that scene, and you can do a lot of display options with it, and right in line with kind of a Starscream colors, we're moving into this this Blitzwing by Trumpeteer. So we've got some in-hand images of the MPM-12, and this is the Optimus Prime for the Bumblebee movie from Takara, and it looks pretty good. It's pretty much what you would expect from uh, Takara for an Optimus Prime. And there's a couple of things about it. Well, first of all, it is Masterpiece Scale. And we're going to see what really is Masterpiece Scale with this here in just a second. And then it it looks good and it transforms into a pretty solid uh, mode. Here it is pulling the trailer. Now, we've seen pictures in the past of pulling the trailer. This is in-hand images of it. I think the cab looks really nice. And, you know, pulling the trailer, it's definitely what you want to do, what you got to do with this thing. And it looks great to reenact that scene at the end of Bumblebee movie. But I think everybody really wants to see this. Here he is next to Toy World, and this is the battle that's going to go down. This is really uh, the the head-to-head -head right here, and which one's better. And then, of course, it's going to be up to you, your aesthetic, what do you like, and what's your collection going to look like. Do you want it taller like the Toy World, or do you want it shorter like Takara? Either way, I mean, yeah, they're both great figures, apparently. So we got more pictures of the Unique Toys version of Megatron. They are calling this thing their UTR04 Nero. It's the Age of Extinction Galvatron. This is the color prototype, and they're moving forward with this. Now, the thing about this is, this is allegedly Unique Toys' last mold they're making. It's the last figure they're going to make, and they have a ton of pre-orders up, so they're just going to keep remaking old molds, I guess. They're not going to make anything new. Uh, maybe they're going to change your name or whatever. But this is the last release, the final release. So are they going to be going out with a bang? And out with a bang, here they go. Uh, it looks good, though. I think there's a lot of things about this that just uh, look great. Uh, there's a lot of paint. Uh, the, it looks like it's going to have a, quite a bit of articulation. And it looks like it's got a lot of detail. And, of course, anytime you make any of these movie characters, you are going to have to put in a ton of detail to make it look anywhere near screen accurate and I think they're doing it. I think they're doing it here and it looks good. Now we've got a few things from Wonderfest and I really need to do some deep digging and do a whole Wonderfest video but it's not covered as well as I would have thought it would have been. I don't have as much information about it but we do have information on this here. Now this is something called a Jing Model Palace Optimus Prime and RC alloy metal movable series and additionally it's been revealed Megatron and Bumblebee releases will follow up next and this is kind of a teaser illustrating the Lyle Convoy style of Optimus Prime and an RC decorated with a gold uh, filigree and it's interesting looking it sounds like it's gonna be very premium it sounds like it's gonna be kind of a made of well if it's metal it should have some die cast in it which is something they've been doing lately so it looks pretty good and there's going to be probably a lot more information that's coming up. Here are the teasers for Megatron and Bumblebee. So you can kind of get an idea of what's going on with that. And it's kind of something interesting. You know, this Wonderfest always has some interesting stuff coming out. Some information, future projects. Not all of it can be gotten all over the world though. Some of it has to be special ordered. So also out of Wonderfest, we got this Azure Sea Studio Shockwave statue teaser image. I don't know why I feel like we've seen this before, but there it is, and it's going to look good. It's it's Shockwave. Shockwave is awesome, killer, and these things are usually really huge, like uh, 24 to 36 inches, so it'll be impressive when we actually see it in person. This is another one that I think we've seen pictures of this Grimlock before, but maybe I'm wrong. Premium Collectible Studio g1 grimlock statue and they say it's a sneak peek they say all we're really getting to see is the head the open mouth some of the paint apps and uh what's going on with that so uh, i thought we've seen something like this before but it's still going to be interesting 
It's going to be big. It's going to be a beast. So uh, when they show us more, we're going to have to check this statue out. So Dr. Wu is staying busy making their sub-legends line. These smaller than Legends figures here, he is with the Extreme Warfare DWEO3 Big Surge. Big Surge for a little guy here. And it looks good. I have to say, it looks good. The transformation is probably really simple. It's one of those things that, that Hasbro just needs to copy and put out another figure like this, right? Here we go with the alt mode. The ultimate mode looks pretty good. It works for being like two inches tall or two and a half inches tall or something. Almost like, like a cassette size figure. Right next to your Beachcomber is an Optimus Prime with the DWE-04 Prime Commander. He looks pretty good for an Optimus Prime that is, a, again, like two and a half inches tall. Uh, gets the job done. And also, of course, transforms. Transforms into a truck, believe it or not, into a truck. And he comes with a trailer. So that looks pretty interesting. Dr. Wu keeps these micro ones going. So getting into Legends, ah, the Devastator War continues with the Legends. And so what we are seeing here is you buy the set of figures separately with New Age, and then you buy a sort of torso to plug them in. So each set of figures is probably going to be $75. That's what I'm seeing at Show Z for the one set that's up right now with the price. So there's three sets of two, making it six figures. No price for this guy yet. There's like a $2 down on it. And you're going to plug them all into this, which is really cool. Uh, that they're doing it and that's how they're doing it but it's also kind of interesting we don't know exactly what Magic Square is doing but Magic Square is cranking out some pictures of their own so we're gonna take a look at that now so here is Magic Square showing off their version of their Devastator and I'm pretty sure they're gonna do more or less the same thing that we are seeing with New Age where you kinda of plug the figures into sort of a torso but it's giving you options here for different types of torso configurations and all that. So that's interesting in itself. So you get G1 or Studio Ox style. Devastator includes interchangeable face, hands, articulated hands, and toy inspired hand drill. And atop it all, we have a color prototype images of the six Constructicons in both modes. Now I think we've seen a little bit of this from Magic Square, but this is the whole team. Uh, what they should be looking like when they're done. I don't know. Maybe I don't think I don't think these are all the correct colors. So uh, not exactly what they look like when they're done. But still, it's nice to see the team lined up, decked out, and they look pretty good. Uh, I have to admit, they do look pretty good in alt mode. I think the alt modes are spot on. So that's what they should look like anyway. And then of course the alt modes kind of translate more into the combined mode. And combined mode is what most people are concerned about. So getting into the mainline, well, it's sort of a transition from third party to mainline because this is a third party product for a mainline product. And this is the DNA Designs, the DK24 SS8606 upgrade kit. And I've seen this before and I never really mentioned it like last week because I didn't think much of it until I realized something very specific about this kit is you actually get an entire wheelie with it. I didn't get that. I thought, okay, we're showing you, you get different heads for the included wheelie and no, you get a whole new wheelie. That is really awesome. Not only that, but it transforms, yes, I said transform, transforms into a car. Uh, a transformable wheelie upgrade kit, and it shows the original versus the upgrade. Pretty awesome. I, I like that. I like that they're doing it. I pre-ordered this thing as soon as I realized it's got a transforming wheelie with it. Yes, it's not the greatest wheelie in the whole world, but it's still pretty interesting as an upgrade to your new Dinobot collection. And since they're going to do all the Dinobots, you might as well have a nice looking wheelie up there. I still don't think it's as good as Ollie. I think Ollie is still the best wheelie out there. Yes, it's got its problems. It's the best, but to have all the upgrade kit and a new figure and all these parts and pieces and stuff, all these gap fillers, all of these uh, weapons and accessories really works. And it'll be awesome. 50 bucks. I've got mine already pre-ordered. So we got a bit of a sightings roundup of a lot of sightings all over the place and one thing that I'm actually excited about which I I don't know why I'm so excited about it but it's wave three of this core class because it has a really nice looking legend scale sound wave that'd be a whole lot of fun to flip around for only 10 bucks I mean it's it's something that it's only 10 bucks it's legend scale it's gonna look good it's gonna be fun to mess with 
Uh, so I kind of like that idea. Also, in Canada, they're starting to see red figures show up of the, was it Wave 3? With the extremely massively large Bumblebee and the Starscream. And so there they are showing up in Canada. And people are starting to find the Kingdom Galvatron, which is pretty exciting. It's a nice looking mold. But I thought he looked kind of wonky in some of the pictures I saw. And some of the pictures I saw, I thought he looked good. And I didn't realize until I see this, now they're pointing out that the shoulders are assembled wrong on some. Some are assembled correctly and some are assembled incorrectly. And the difference is where the shoulder is positioned on his body. The lower shoulder almost makes the figure look like he's way too wide chested and with his shoulders up properly, he has a lot better proportions and it looks more correct. So kind of keep this in mind and have a look at it if you're looking to pick yours up. Uh, I think you could actually just uh, fix them yourself possibly, but I don't know. I don't know yet. So we got more pictures of this premium paint Takara Optimus Prime. And if you missed out on this release before the Studio Series release, and it's gone to shot up way over 100 bucks. pre-order it for about $50. Yeah, 50 is more than it was, I think, before. Or $55, I think, is what the pre-order prices are. So it's a little more than it was in the original release. But it is supposed to have a premium paint job to it. And... Any place online that you normally buy your Transformers that carries Hasbro and Takara stuff will probably carry this, so pre-order it with them. Now, uh, it does look pretty good, and I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the first release, so I don't know the differences between them. But here's the thing, the alt mode is very clean looking, and I like a clean looking alt mode, so there it is. And there's the Megatron. It, I just get the vibe of the Walmart version of Megatron. I don't mean the sorry version of Megatron. A lot of people say the Walmart version is being the cheaper version, but this is the Walmart uh, Netflix kind of this kind of the feeling I get. It is a completely different paint and the way they went around the paint with this thing. So it does look different in that regards. And here is the alt mode. So we get to see it in its alt mode. And another one where once you've transformed it, it looks clean. It doesn't look like it's got a ton of battle damage. You still have the battle damage from the legs showing up, but overall still looks pretty clean in its alt mode. And I kind of like the clean alt mode. So we've gotten more pictures from Hasbro of figures that are coming in Kingdom pretty soon and they're all up for pre-order at of course all of your online places that sell Hasbro stuff and the, I don't want to spend too much time on this but I do want to say if you want to get your order in order generally they're five dollars more each at the online places than if you were to catch them in Walmart or in Target or something like that. I'm rolling the dice to try to get them in Walmart or Target myself more specifically but this is a nice looking version of Rekgar. I think he looks really good. You definitely want to get two of them so he can sit on himself. And then here is the other Dinobot that we already know is on the way. Of course we're going to get them all. And looks good. Uh, I think he looks really good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to get a face, a, a sticker face for the Daniel there. But still it looks really good and I kind of like the way it's going in the direction they're going with the Dinobots. It's uh, really exciting. And then this gnaw here and this is going to be probably the best one that they've made ever. So really kind of exciting right there. Again, you can pre-order all these at your normal places and get in on it before. Or you can roll the dice like me. I think I'm going to find them in the wild. I've been having some good luck lately. So for those who don't know or forgot that Walmart is going to be reissuing Beast Wars in the actual, I guess, vintage style packaging. And they're going to be expensive, like 50 bucks a piece, uh, 50 up or whatever, 30 to 50 or something like that. Anyway... Takara's also doing them in different colors, or a bit of a slightly different color scheme. And so here we are with the Cheetor, and uh, I think it looks good. Uh, it's vibrant colors. Uh, if you are in on that 96 nostalgic look, there you go. Here we are with the Megatron reissue, or re-release from Takara, and the Takara colors, and Takara coloring. And there's the Megatron, which will, of course, look very reminiscent of back in the day. And here's the Optimus Primal, Optimus Primal, Optimal, Optimus Primal. And yeah, again, looks, I caught my eye because these all just look a little bit different colors than what I'm used to seeing around these parts of the world. And so that's the Takara coloring and Takara paint. Here's the Rat Trap with the ginormous uh, rat skin backpack that he likes to wear. And there it is. These figures will be coming out and you got to uh, pre-order them through... Takara or any place that would carry the Takara and maybe maybe Amazon Japan will have them So ton ton did a review I guess on this Waspinator so Waspinator is uh, For the kingdom and looks pretty interesting uh, Definitely looks way more upgraded modernized Waspinator 
a little bit less classic than I expected, but I still think he's a kind of a cool looking Waspinator nonetheless. I was always kind of wondering, what are they gonna do better than the 30th anniversary, which uh, they did a pretty good job in the 30th, so, uh, the or the thrilling 30 era. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. So I'm guessing this is next to maybe the Takara version of the Thrilling 30, because uh, I don't think that's the vintage one. But anyway, there they are side by side, looking pretty different. Uh, definitely a more modern take on the figure and the character. So there he goes. And here's uh, Waspinator next to Deluxe Mirage and the, the Leader class Galvatron, and then next to Optimal Optimus, the, the Voyager scale. So... He's going to be a small bot. So we've got a company called Knock Around making sunglasses for Transformers. Transformers sunglasses. I have to admit, uh, it feels like in the 80s we got everything with whatever brand we were interested in. Sunglasses, socks, shoes, pajamas, underwear, all that kind of stuff. Just doesn't seem like it's as in your face these days with stuff like sunglasses and those kinds of things. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of cool. 35 bucks a pair. Uh, my, my last pair of sunglasses came from Dollar Tree. With all the great news going on this week, I still want to stop and talk about this Cyberverse Ultra S4 Sludge. And I'm starting to wonder, is Cyberverse going to make all of the Dinobots also? So we're seeing a lot of Dinobots getting made in Cyberverse, a lot of Dinobots getting made in the main line, and we're getting quite a bit of Dinobot, Dinobot love, and they look good. For the Cyberverse, I think they look pretty good. This one... Uh, it's it's not super spot on, not uh, um, exactly G1, but it's not based on G1, and it still has a really nice homage to the original and the core, and I think it looks kind of interesting. So we've heard about this before, but more update information. July 29th on Netflix, we're going to be watching the War for Cybertron Trilogy, Kingdom. We're going to round out the trilogy with the Kingdom, and it's going to be one of those things, I think they're going to put it up in Netflix style, and you could binge through it in a day or two if you want to, if you choose to. So it'll be kind of interesting to uh, see how it all ties together. And they kind of tie the G1 to Beast Wars in this fashion. So before we get into Star Wars news, which is a mixed bag, we have quite a few other things to talk about real quick. First off, there is a new Voltron coming to town. And it's a Carbotics, which I don't really know much about that company but I know Blitzway and Blitzway made a really cool Inspector Gadget and so this Inspector Gadget from Blitzway uh, ha has a lot of stuff going on and it was 90 bucks this thing's gonna be bigger I think this is gonna be more like 18 to 24 inches there is no information aside from this picture so this picture is all you get you don't get price you don't get size you don't get uh, materials or any of that stuff but next month in, in a month or so or less than a month we're gonna have Pre-orders available. We're going to know uh, everything about this, the size, height, price, all that good stuff. So looking at it right now, just from this picture, I think it looks amazing. It looks like an awesome Voltron. It has some covers for the legs. It is transformable from looking at the picture. It's apparently transformable. Maybe I'm wrong, but it does appear to be transformable. And it has a taller, slinger, slicker, leaner, slinger look. It does look really good. It may dethrone Bandai as the best Voltron ever, but then again, it may not. So we had Ramen Toys come out with a live stream just a couple days ago, and they showed off actual test shots, or first shots, of their figures for the 80s Commanders, and they look great, and they appear to be coming on very well. Now, this first shot, they actually were produced, ran through the mold, and sent back to us, and or back to them actually and they got to show the articulation how it operates it is a little bit uh floppy and loose and they say that's part of the process because it's going to get tightened up they need to show exactly where it's tightened up how it's getting tightened up and with this process you find about the assembly process some parts were assembled wrong but this is the armor commander in uh or, or if you want to call it jake it's not really centurions it's 80s commanders but if you want to call him jake you can and and there he is we also have the if you want to call it max but the naval commander right here and they all look good i just really do like the way these look they look different enough that they're not exactly centurions but they are reminiscent enough to look like centurions we're getting in the six inch scale here i i think they look great i'm in on two sets out in october 
Uh, they are $89.99 if you didn't get it on the early bird price prior to May. So that's kind of the way it is. Uh, I did jump in on it because I knew I was going to get them anyway. So no matter what, no matter the cost. And here is the Air, is it Air Force Commander? Air Commander. And he's looking good. Now you didn't get any of the helmets and uh, and some of the things. He kind of showed the tolerances of the plug-ins and all that stuff. And showed the dimensions of the, the spaces between the plugs. So really a lot of fun. A lot of good things going on. I really can't wait to get these in my hands. See them painted. See them when we, they're going to do another uh, live stream and show off the helmets and they're going to show some more. And of course, when they get colored shots, they're going to show those too. So really, it's it's coming along very well. The reveals this week just don't stop. Super 7 is revealing their uh, partly plastic and partly tuned uh, versions of Silverhawks. Partly metal and partly real. Not these. But anyway, these do look good. They look good. They're not back metalized. So a lot of people are talking about, do they look super tuned? I might have to go deeper into that, dig, grab some screenshots and all that good stuff. But um, I personally don't feel like they match the cartoon, but I really have to have side-by-sides and discuss all that if if that's the route we're going to go. So I really kind of like this picture because it sums it all up and you get to see the four figures that they're going to be releasing. I don't know how deep they're going to go with this, but see how big Monstar is and and I actually forgot the other guy's name, which the vintage one was green, and this guy is kind of gold. And so I got to revisit the cartoon again. I don't remember even his name. But uh, anyhow, uh, the the ones in the back are so much bigger. Monster's going to be 85 bucks, And I think that he actually does look good. He looks spot on. looks exactly like he should. And I'm pretty sure he's going to come with a whole ton of slew of accessories and stuff too. And then in the front here, we have these guys. And uh, so these are all going to be... Like 55 bucks each, and then Monster is 85, so 250 for all of them. Alright, so here we are with what the accessories they have. And as you can see, you have with the Quicksilver, you have swappable arms, which would swap out to have the wings or not the wings. And then you have a couple of Tallyhawks in there, so that's pretty good. Or maybe it's just one Tallyhawk with articulation. And then you got swappable heads. Uh, so that you can have the mask down or no mask. So really that's kind of some good options there. So some good things they're thinking about. Quite a bit of accessories for $55 each. And then you got Stillheart, similar type stuff with her. And then, so the other one is Buzzsaw. I forgot his name and uh, I always think he's green, but I guess he's gold. I guess that is the tune accurate color. I don't know. I gotta look it up. But he comes with a bunch of slew of accessories that he didn't come up with the G G1 figure. Thank goodness, trying to track all, all that down, if it came with the G1 figure, the original figure, that would suck. And then Monstar uh, with swappable heads and a lot of good stuff he's got going on there. A lot of weapons, uh, and he's got his uh, different hands that swap out. And he's got the one, a lot of hands trying to do a gotcha. So getting into some Star Wars news, th there's a lot of stuff going on here with Star Wars, but it's not all great. And they're putting out this Rogue One squad the whole squad again like they did with Rebels. And it's going to be a fan channel exclusive and all this stuff. Now, I made an entire video about it. So, if you want more in-depth discussion about these releases, go check that video out. So, I'm not going to talk too deep about these. But I really think it was kind of a bad idea to put these out. But you get to complete the crew with the Bodie Rook and all that. And you get a, a different uh, Cassian and Dor uh, costume outfit. So, I guess that's a good thing. I did like the Black Series pipeline reveals. So, really, some great characters coming up down the road. Nothing I'm excited about coming out right away. But I am pretty excited about some future stuff coming out. So I guess I guess it's a mixed bag. So that's kind of how it is. A big mixed bag. Lackluster for what's now. Maybe the next one won't be so lackluster. And they'll be putting some good stuff out. There are a couple of new figures coming. The Antoc Merrick and the Galen Urso. Which are Target exclusives. And at this point uh, sold out. Oh, I'm sure they sold out by 115 Or whatever. Anyway, you can, you can go to Target and get these. So that's the challenge with it is getting target exclusives in any brand but anyhow there they are and so they look okay for what they are and these are perfect figures for exclusives considering the fact that they are kind of oddball characters that not everybody's really going to be after looking at the vintage collection uh it, it's it's pretty good that we have some figures coming that are new and some some reissues and stuff but Overall, um, I believe that the Vintage Collection figures are okay. They look good. They look they look great. The Bo-Katan so, sells out fast. So 
Uh, I think she sold out pretty much everywhere. I think you can still get the other three. And uh, and then we did have the Hasbro Pulse exclusive Republic Commando. I really didn't talk about the Republic Commando because he's a reissue from like 2012. But uh, he sells out right away. I mean, what's the point? If he sold out, you can't get him, right? Now, again, I go a lot deeper in my video talking about this. And I did, I did a whole separate video so I don't spend 20 minutes talking about Star Wars during my new segment. So... Bib Fortuna and Lobot and then the Cantina coming out for the Vintage Collection. Now the Cantina is not going to be uh, the Cantina from Moss Eisley. So anyway, uh, good choices here. Uh, pipeline reveals. But this is like 2022. If we're lucky, December of this year. But more likely, we're not going to see any of the Pipeline stuff till next year. So the rest of the year is kind of lackluster for me. So the one thing I didn't talk about in my I am your father live stream, the the new HasLab. Now I've been known to talk a lot about HasLab, and one thing I want to say about this HasLab is that it's going to be for the Black Series, so it's six inch scale. It's not going to be a vehicle because well, Black Series doesn't really do vehicles. Uh, really, they don't. It's not it's not really existent in the Black Series, which scares me for joke. It might be a, a playset or. And, and it might be a big, like a like a like a Moss Eisley's Eisley Cantina. It might be a cantina like that. That's a possibility. But a lot of people think it's going to be more of a monster. Like right? it's going to be like a Rancor. So I'm just starting to think though, like why would they need a Haslab or Rancor? Why couldn't they just make a Rancor that would work for either scale? Uh, and and why would they, uh, why would they not make like a playset, an environment? So I, I don't know. It's really up in the air. I don't know if going to shock us because I had no expectation of them doing the Hazlab Razor Crest. And guess what? They did. So uh, so I guess I'm fresh out of ideas. They're going to hit me from the side on this because I'll I'll have no idea. So let's, let me know what you think about this week's weekly news and review. What all great stuff happened out there that I missed? And what did you think about all this? Like and subscribe to Dream Hanger Out.